For our fifth sample program for arrays, we're going to look at passing arrays to functions. So in this sample program, what we're after is <clears throat> declaring and initializing an array, displaying it, uh, and then also displaying the average. Okay, so not uh, too dissimilar from the last sample program. Uh, the difference is, though, that uh, this time we've done it with an array. So we can see here uh, the comments I have uh, for a function called average of array. The first parameter is a uh, double array, and notice the empty subscript, okay, empty square brackets. What this indicates is that you can use as an argument an array of doubles. It doesn't really matter what size the array is. What actually gets passed to the function is uh, not an array uh, by value, but rather the memory address of the first position of the array. Um, that's why it doesn't really matter what size the array is. It's just the starting address. Um, this is important to understand because unlike a, a regular double, uh, when you pass by value, you get a copy. When you pass an array, you're always passing by reference, meaning if I were to, in this function, change the array, change the contents of the array, um, that change it, it changes it in the one spot the array exists in memory. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind. Now, of course, in order to process the array, we do need to know how large it is. So I have a second parameter um, to send in the size. Okay, And this is pretty typical in a C++ program that's uh, processing a simple array, is you pass the array itself, uh, which is actually by memory address, and you also pass in the size. So in this particular example, it's going to uh, go through the array, sum up all the values, divide it by the size, and return that as a double. So I'll scroll down to where the function is defined. Okay, you can see here, again, the, uh, the same uh, function header. I have a sum of values, which I initialize to zero. I go through a loop. You notice that the names I'm using are a little bit more generic now because this is a reusable function for any kind of array. Okay, so I go through my uh, uh, loop controlled by a counter. I sum them up, and I simply return uh, the sum divided by the size. So pretty straightforward stuff. If I scroll up a bit, I can see where I've actually called it. Um, the average test score was, and then calling my average of array function, passing it student test grades, which is the entire array, not just one element of it. Okay, so the memory address of that array gets sent to array values. Array values is essentially just another name for student test grades in that function call. Number of tests, which is four, gets copied into uh, size, and then we use size in the function. And that's basically how that works. So for another example, let's add in a, a minimum value function. Okay, so I'll go back up here to the top and I will uh, code the, uh, the comments and the function header for a minimum value function. And there we are. So we can see the function prototype follows the same sort of uh, pattern. We're passing in the array, we're passing in the size. Okay, so pretty straightforward stuff. So well, let's code this function. All right. So um, we start off by uh, creating a variable called uh, lowest value, which is a double to match the array. And we uh, assume that the lowest value is found in the first position of the array. I can, can't just set the lowest value to some arbitrarily large number because this function um, doesn't have the context of uh, any particular program. So for example, if I set it to 101, well, uh, I might be passing an array to this where 101 would be uh, uh, too small. Okay, so I just assume that it's the first position of the array. And therefore, when I go through my loop to process the rest of the array, I'm starting it at the second position or position one. Still going to less than the size, however. And then the logic is pretty much uh, what we've seen before. If the uh, array at the position we're on is less than the lowest value we have stored so far, then we want to reset what the lowest value um, actually is. Okay, so once we go through that loop, um, when we're done, we can return the lowest value. Okay, so next we'll add the function call. Okay, so here in the final output, we've got the average test score, um, and then we'll add in the minimum test score. So the function call, the name of the function, we're passing in 
the uh, uh, student test grades array, the entire thing, which gets passed by address, and again, the number of tests that uh, gets passed to the size. So we'll try and run that, and we should be good to go. Okay, so we can see the average looks right, the lowest test score uh, looks right as well. Now the last thing we'll do in this sample program is uh, I just want to briefly show you an, an alternative way that we could have figured out the, uh, the minimum value uh, and sent it back to main. Okay, so we'll go up to the top and we'll, we'll prototype um, a slightly different function. Okay, so this function is called minimum value index. Sometimes it's useful um, to know where the index of something is. So what this function does is it still finds the minimum value like our previous function. Um, however, what it returns is not the value itself, but rather the index where the minimum value can be found. Okay. So again, a very similar type of function, um, but may be more useful to you in certain circumstances. So let's code that function. Not much different in the way that it's actually coded. Um, what I'm recording is the, uh, the index rather than the actual value. Okay, so again, I just set the index to zero. Um, I still go through my loop starting at the second position and to the end. When I do my comparison, I'm always comparing the array at a position to the array at a different position. So the counter compared to the lowest index. And I just update the index, not the value. And of course, that's what I return as well. So pretty straightforward. Let's do the uh, function call. Okay, so previously with minimum value, I just simply called the function, passed it the array and the size. Here, I'm calling the function again, minimum value index, passing the array and the size, but that actually becomes the subscript for the array. Okay, so to find out the, uh, the lowest test score, I want to know the value, I have to look it up. So the name of the array, and then in square brackets, this is the, the index that's being produced by the actual function. So let's have a look at that running. So we can see here that uh, the output is as expected. We see the lowest test score um, is both, uh, you know, worked both times. Okay, um, so that's our fifth sample program. And again, what we were doing there was passing an array uh, to a function um, in order to, uh, in this case, do some processing.